In this video, we're going to connect to a ClickHouse server using an SSH key instead of a password, a feature that was introduced in ClickHouse 23.9. So I've got a ClickHouse server running and let's start by connecting as the default user. So I'll just show you by doing a select current user, you can see it is in fact the default user. What we're gonna do next is we'll create a user mark and mark is identified with the SHA-256 password, my password. And we will also grant Mark the demangle permissions. Um, so we need this for the auto to complete to work in the ClickHouse client. Now we're gonna go over to another tab and we're gonna to connect to the ClickHouse client again, but this time we're gonna pass in the user Mark. It will then ask me to type in my password. So let's do that. And now I'm connected. And, and again, let's run the current user function. And you can see this time it comes back as Mark. Let's exit the client. And now this time we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna create a user that has access via SSH key. So we're gonna use the SSH key gen utility to do this, we'll call that, we'll pass in the type of the key that we wanna create. So it's gonna be ED25519, but you can do other types. We'll give it my email address, and then we'll tell it where we want the key to go. So it's gonna be under the .ssh folder, ch underscore key. And then it'll ask me to type in my passphrase and then confirm the passphrase. Let's have a look at the public key. And you can see in the middle there, we've got the actual key that we need to, to copy to copy so that we can give it to ClickHouse. We'll now go back to the other tab and this time we're gonna create a user called Alexi, identified by an SSH key. And then we're just gonna paste in the key there. And once we've done that, then we can specify the type. So remember that was ED25519, but you could use RSA. You just need to make sure that you, uh, that you pass in the type here. And then when you generate the key, you use that uh, type. Again, let's give the demangle permissions to Alexi. Okay, now let's go over to our other tab and we're gonna connect to the ClickHouse client again, but this time we'll pass in the current user query as a query parameter. We'll also specify the user Alexi. And then this time we can also specify the SSH key file. So the location of where that SSH the key file lives, the private key, we'll pass that in and then it will say, hey, what's your passphrase? We type that in and we get back the user Alexi. Now, if we're always using the same user and key, we can define it in a config file. So this lives under .clickhouse client config.xml. And so we'll type in the config and then we'll give it the user and we'll give it the path to our SSH key file. Make sure you don't use the tilde inside here. So it needs to be the fully qualified path to your file. If we then come back out of Vim and we'll get back our previous ClickHouse command and we're just gonna delete the user and the SSH key file. And then we can press enter, enter our passphrase, and you can see there it comes back with Alexi. I think this feature is gonna be really useful as we're likely already using SSH keys to log into Git or production servers. And so now we can add ClickHouse to that list. It also has the added benefit of providing much better protection against attacks such as brute force, credential stuffing, or man in the middle. And if you're interested in other features added in ClickHouse 23.9, take a look at this video up here, which explains the greatest common denominator codec. 